Hello, this is going to be a video where I show you some math, computer science, and physics books. Some of the books in this video are awesome, and some of them are pretty good. And they range from beginner level to stuff that is super, super advanced. So some of these books are better for people who are already you know, into the field, like maybe you know some math so you can tackle some of these books. And some of them are better for people who are just starting. So there's a good range here. And the computer science books, I almost think, are good for everyone. Let's go ahead and start with those. So the first one is called Learning Python. And this is a super famous book that teaches you how to code in Python. I'm pretty sure there's a newer edition. As always, I'll try to leave new editions and links in the description of this video. And Python is just a little interesting because I remember looking up Python many years ago and messing with it and it wasn't that popular you know it's just like I, I i would remember talking to people like hey i'm messing around with python and they didn't really know what it was it wasn't really a big thing now when you mention python it's like everyone knows what it is even people who don't program know what python is that's how popular it's become and this is one of the most popular books if not the most popular book i've worked out some of the examples from this book i've you know messed around with some of the code examples. I've read small portions. It's a pretty good book. I've dabbled in Python over the years. Um, and it's an easy language to learn compared to a lot of the other ones. But yeah, just a good book to learn Python. But again, there's courses, there's videos, there's other books. Uh, again, I'm old school. I still prefer books. There's another book that is really famous. It's called The Art of R Programming, a Tour of Statistical Software Design. And this is a book for R. R is a statistical programming language. This book is probably one of the best, if not the best book for learning R. And again, there's courses you can take. Um, there's videos you can watch on the internet, but I still think it's good to have a book. You know, what if the power goes out and it's raining and all you have is a candle and you're running your computer off a generator. <laughs> I was thinking because if you're coding, it does help to have a PC. So you do need power for that. This book here is really interesting. I've read very, very large portions of this book. This is a book on modern physics. So in the United States, uh, a student, an undergraduate student, would take a course on modern physics, typically after taking two courses on physics, so physics one and physics two, and then this would be like physics three. When I used this book for a course, the course was actually called physics three. And it's shocking to me because physics, for me at least, was a very difficult subject. Physics was the first class that I ever took where I felt, I, I felt stupid. I felt like I was dumb. I felt like I was behind everyone else and I, I couldn't learn. It just I just really felt bad and I studied. I worked so hard and I saw mediocre results. And I, I just never overcame it until I got to physics three. When I took physics three, that's when I kind of branched out and I got an A in this class, one of the highest grades in the class. So modern physics, it's got really cool stuff like relativity. It talks about time dilation. Very, very nice book. Excellent for modern physics. Um, highly recommend it. Physics is a really beautiful subject. I have a lot of respect for people who who study physics. Um, you know, I look at this equation here and I say, yeah, you know, there, there's people who, who work with this all the time. Um, they're always solving these physics problems. I have a lot of physics books. I have some really interesting uh, and rare physics books that I should mention sometimes in some videos. But yeah, general relativity, wow. I just opened it up to that random page. It's, it's a sign, right? It's a sign, pretty cool. Yeah, great book for modern physics. This next book I wanna show you is a graduate level book, math graduate level book on complex analysis. It's written by the legendary uh, Serge Lang, and I always tell my story about Serge Lang. I think I've mentioned it in a video or two, but at the risk of of repeating myself, I'll say it again because maybe you haven't heard me say it. I think maybe I only mentioned it once or twice. Um, I have a book by Serge Lang called Calculus of Several Variables, and when I bought the book, Serge Lang was alive. When I got the book, 
I'm getting goosebumps. Serge Lang was no longer alive. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I, I, I'm like 99% sure it's true because I remember checking the date on Wikipedia because it has the day he died on Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia or the internet? I, I don't remember which it was, but it was probably Wikipedia. This is, this is a long time ago, right? So I, I don't recall if it was Wikipedia or just Google, but kind of creepy. Um, this book is on complex analysis. It's very well written. It's extremely well written. But you do need to know some mathematics before you read this. So you definitely want to have um, some proof writing behind your back. You want to have some calculus behind your back. But more than that, it actually helps, in my opinion, to have a class on complex variables before even studying this. If you have an undergraduate class where you use a book like the one by Saf and Snyder or the one by Brown and Churchill, prior to taking this, um, it helps. I mean, it helps to have a math degree, right? I mean, it's a graduate level uh, complex analysis book. So this is meant for people who have math degrees. Not only that, they have math degrees and they're going to graduate school. So they're like the good math majors, the math majors that did well enough to even get into graduate school. That's the, that's the kind of people who read books like this. So this, out of all the books I'm showing you here, this is extremely advanced and probably the most advanced. It's, it's a close tie with this ultra famous book here. This is without a doubt, there's not even a question. This is without a doubt the most top popular topology book in the United States of America and possibly the world. This is the uh, Eastern Economy Edition. I believe it was printed in India. I believe this copy is from India, um, but it's a soft cover. I have this edition because the regular version of Monkeries is very, very expensive. I actually looked at it earlier today for some reason, and it was over $100, okay, 100 American dollars for um, a soft cover version of Topology by Monkeries. That's, that's what I saw. I didn't do a lot of research. I just Googled it really quick, so you might be able to find it cheaper. I will try to find it and see what I can find and leave links in the description. This one, I saved some money by getting the Eastern Economy Edition. So this book, by the way, teaches you Topology, okay, so you can use it as a beginner. So part one is general topology. And part two is algebraic topology. Now, I don't think that um, a person should just read the topology portion and then jump to a different book on algebraic topology. I highly recommend the algebraic topology treatment in this book. I have read some of this, not all of it, but I have read some of this a long time ago. And I found this easier to be than other books. Like if you compare this to um, you know, the content you'll see in Hatcher or the presentation there, it, it helps it helps to go through this material and then in, you know, attack a book like the Hatcher book. This is used at the graduate level and at the advanced undergraduate level. It's the book. You know, if you go to any if you go to any math department and you go to any math major and you say, hey, what's the best book on topology? They're gonna say the Monkreys book, right? They're gonna come back with Monkreys because it's a legendary book. It doesn't have any answers to any of the problems. Uh, at least my at least my edition doesn't. I haven't seen them. The exercises in Monkeries are excellent. A lot of times, if you're taking a topology class, these very exercises are the ones that will show up on your exams. So it's really really good to do these. When I took topology, I used this as the book, but the teacher um, I had was famous. He's, he actually has his own Wikipedia page, and um, he created like some field of topology. He was really really famous. And he, um, he, he required us to use his book, but his notes were excellent. So I didn't really need to use the book because he was such a masterful teacher. Um, I think he was French and Russian both. Like um, he spoke French or he was, yeah, something like he spoke French, but he lived in Russia or one of the two where he was born in Russia, but he spoke French and he worked in France. I mean, just brilliant man, brilliant teacher. Um, just, just an opportunity to take a class with a person like that is is priceless. So, yeah, just a great book for learning topology. Highly recommend it. Um, it's hard. There's easier books. There's a book on the internet. It's free. It's called uh, Topology Without Tears. It was written by, I believe, Sidney Morris. And I'll try to leave a link in the description. If not, you can Google it. Just type in Topology Without Tears. Also, if you don't speak English or if your English is bad, Topology Without Tears has been translated to so many languages. It is ridiculous. I have so much respect for people who, who translate math books. It's just it's just an incredible task, and I feel like there's so little reward for these people. I mean, sure, they have the name on the book. It's a translation, but you know, it's just a lot of work uh, to translate a math book. And so... 
props to all the people who, um, you know, just a big shout out to everyone who translates bath books because it's a huge task. And I think those people, I don't know, they should be honored or something. <laughs> so Topology Without Tears, available in multiple languages. Here's a book for beginners. Uh, I don't know if it's expensive. I only paid a few dollars for this copy. I did make a video on this book a long time ago. And so I don't know if other people bought the book, but it was fairly inexpensive when I bought it. It's called Algebra and Trigonometry. It's by Cameron. Um, and it's just an old school algebra and trig book. I just got to give it a whiff because it's an old book and I love the smell of this book. One second. Ah, oh, so good. Whoops. So good. So good. Smells delicious. Amazing smell. So this is just a, a straight up book on algebra and trig. It's kind of fun. You know, if you're taking a, a class today, right, uh, in college today, you're probably using a new book and you buy that book. It's going to, you buy that book new, it's going to cost you two or 300 bucks, right? That's just what they cost, right? They're very expensive. Um, and you probably have to buy some access code. At least that's how it is in the U.S., right? You buy an access code, which, you know, there's pros and cons of online homework. Um, it definitely makes it easier for the teachers, and it does give the students some immediate feedback, so that's good. The con is that we miss we miss the books, right? We miss the books. So, and unfortunately, the books do cost a lot. I mean, a lot of work goes into those books. They're fairly good quality, some of those books. You know, you buy a $200 book that's new. It's bigger than this book physically. And I don't know how much this book cost when it was new, right? It was probably quite expensive. So I guess everything is relative. But the amount of knowledge in these books, honestly, uh, is, is ridiculous. There's so much knowledge in these math books that people always say books are expensive and they should lower the prices. And I mean, I do agree. I'm all for cheap books. But to me, these math, like a book like this, to me, I paid less than, maybe less than $10 for. This is, this is like priceless to me, right? It's just a collectible and it's a piece of history. Yeah, so much knowledge. Anyways, if you're taking one of those new classes and you've got, you know, a big fancy book and you're using, um, you know, online homework, uh, I recommend getting some old books. You can get these cheap. This is a good example. And you can see different examples, different explanations. You'll get, you'll get some answers in here. It's not going to give you, it should give you some answers. I'm pretty sure this has the odds. Yeah, it's got the odds. You probably call them selected exercises, but you see you've got answers to odd numbered questions in the back of the book. So definitely recommend it. I started collecting math books when um, I was in Calculus 3. I was buying complex analysis books and complex variables books. It's not about Michael Spivak's calculus. And um, it was just an addiction ever since. I, I, I'm, as a collector, as you can see, I'm a huge Magic the Gathering fan. I love these things. I'll try to leave a link in the description to these, by the way. These are so cool. These are handmade. Handmade. Yeah, really cool. And... This next book here I've talked about before, I'm sure. This is this is my favorite advanced calculus book. So to study advanced calculus, you're going to need uh, to know how to write proofs. And the other book has an introduction to proofs, so it kind of tackles that. We'll take a look at that in a minute because that's quite interesting. It's a kind of a unique book there, which is probably more suited for beginners than this for sure. I like this book much better. It has a, a higher level flow. Uh, throughout the, uh, I want to say prose, like the way it's written. I'll use the word prose to sound like a a lit a lit literature person <laughs> so i like the explanations are clean it starts with a both combined single and multivariable approach it has exercises that vary in difficulty from computational to easy medium to hard it's got some hard ones in there um, some sections lighter than others it's got illustrations even though it was originally a book that was written in the 60s it has answers to some of the exercises and there actually does exist there does exist a solutions manual to this book. So it's like a, I just realized I said that in a math way, you know, there exists an integer N, you know, so there does exist a solutions manual to this book. And I actually have that solutions manual now. I actually own it now. Very hard to find, very, very rare. I should make a video on it because I feel like it's like a handwritten solutions manual by the author. It's a, a piece of history. So great book. I have spent a great deal of time with this book, um, reading it, you know, from cover to cover. I didn't read the whole book, but I read a decent amount, maybe maybe 25% of this book. I mean, to be completely honest, 25% of this book is still a lot of mathematics. So uh, I just want to emphasize that. Um, I mean, 25% of a math book is a lot. Math books, you know what it's like, right? You sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and it's a grind. So maybe 25% of this book, and I've done quite a few exercises from the book. I've also used it as a reference uh, for sections I haven't read, like I've referenced other sections. Um, it's just got great content, great content, worth owning. Highly recommend the book by Buck. It's my favorite book on advanced calculus. And this one here, 
It's probably more suited for beginners. I got this book very inexpensively. Uh, definitely less than $20. I've never talked about it, I think. Analysis with an Introduction to Proof by Stephen Arlay. You can probably get this book pretty inexpensively today. It's probably not expensive. And this book is nice because it's good for beginners. Okay, it's good for beginners. It starts with logic and proof, right? It starts with uh, logical connectives, you see? So it teaches you how to write proofs. And it doesn't spend too much time on it, you see? It kind of jumps through. Whereas if you buy a proof writing book, you, know, you can spend months of your life. I mean, people take a whole course. People will buy a proof writing book and they'll take a whole college level course. That is a lot of material, right? A lot of material gets covered in a course. So to try to self-study that, uh, takes an incredible amount of motivation and willpower. I'm not saying you can't do it, but I'm just saying it takes an incredible amount of motivation and willpower. So when you get a book like this, what happens is you have a brief introduction and then you have you know, some more sections. You have sets and functions. Nice small sections. I like books with small sections. Real numbers, sequences, limits and continuity, differentiation, integration, infinite series, Sequences and series of functions. Notice there's not a lot of um, multivariable stuff in here, right? There's not a lot here. It does talk about metric spaces, so that's that's good. But it's got answers to practice problems, which is nice, as you see here. And it's got some answers in the back of the book as well. Let's go look. That makes it a great book for self-study. Yeah, hints for selected exercises. So they never give you everything, but it's certainly better than nothing, right? Whereas the Monkery's book has um, you know no no solutions, which is very very rough. It has really clean proofs. Uh, as always, the best proofs are your proofs. Okay, so the easiest proofs to read are the proofs that you write. Um, it's always harder to read someone else's proof. Just like if you're into coding, since this is also a computer science video, you know if someone gives you a bunch of code in C, uh, you know they give you like a thousand lines of code in C, and you got to go through that and they have all kinds of variables and stuff, I mean, it's going to take you some time. Whereas if you wrote the program, if you wrote a thousand lines of code, then it's much easier for you to understand what's what's going on. I remember I made a, I made a video game once in, in C, just in C. It was, called, it was called The Legend of Karsuka. And it was a very, very primitive game. And it was probably like a thousand lines of code. And this is before even, you know, going to college. This is completely, I was completely self-taught. Um, you know, I, I didn't even have a high school diploma, and I was able to do that. That's why I think, that's why I said that about the computer science books, because computer science coding was something that I was able to do without a formal education. So I think that a person could pick up a book on Python, which is easier than C, and, and they could learn Python. So that's what I based my comment on earlier when I said that these books are for everyone. It's because of, of the personal experience that I've had um, with, with coding, which hasn't been a lot but I've coded in C, C++, Python, and a little bit of R, and a little bit of Java as well, but certainly not an expert. Injective functions, yeah. So a lot of this stuff you see in other courses, like if you take a discrete math course, you'll see a lot of this mathematics as well. So anyways, I just wanted to show you some books here uh, in this video, and yeah, I hope everyone had a really, really good New Year's, right? We're now in 2023, and I kind of wanted to make a random video where I show you books on multiple subjects, kind of like, you know, like, hey, you know, do something for the new year. I've been really, really busy, um, so I finally got a chance to sit down and make a video. But yeah, until next time, good luck and take care, and keep doing math.